Hello there. This thing that I have for us today is ridiculous. It is very, very ridiculous, if only by name alone. Let me show you. This right here is the puck sucker, and boy does it suck pucks. I came up with that bit before the video, thank you very much. No, but in reality, a lot of you, especially those home enthusiasts, have probably seen this product floating around in the last few months. This is a new release from Breville, who is a huge manufacturer of home espresso products, kitchen appliances, and all sorts of fun accessories that then go with those things. This is one of those said fun accessories. And it may seem a little bit mysterious as to what it is initially. I mean, besides the name, of course. It's just kind of this um, hard plastic rotund thing that they've created that has a nice hole on top. A little bit mysterious, it's a little bit vague, but the name really does tell you what it does. And as it implies, this essentially is a very, very expensive knockbox. In case you don't know what a knockbox is, let me show you a, a much more garden variety. Let me show you the, the kind of standard for the knockboxes. The one I have here, pretty normal knockbox, just also happens to be from Breville as well for comparison. The function of this is pretty simple. It's an espresso trash can. <laughs> That is the most glamorous and simplified way to put it. It's both glamorous and simplified. Anyway, it's a little tiny bin. All of these, no matter what brand you get, kind of function the same. You have like a cross brace here. And then once you're all done pulling your espresso, you have this thing in here. This is called a puck. This is the puck of espresso that is now spent. So this is something that is very condensed. It's very hardened. It's been compacted under a lot of pressure. We need to remove it in order to pull our next espresso. So we have this cross brace and this is very cathartic. I will say this is one of my favorite parts of a barista job. You just kind of line it up. You knock it out and then you wipe your portafilter and you're good to go. I've never found this particular part of the job very burdensome. In fact, I find it very cathartic. It's very fun to knock out the puck. But maybe, maybe you are someone who does not want to knock out the puck. Perhaps you want your puck to be sucked out. In that case, we have this strange product that Breville has brought out. Before I give you the full rundown of this and also what I think about it, I need to go pull some more espresso so we have some more pucks to knock out. So in the meantime, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video. I want to give a huge thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Contrary to what you may believe, I don't always like smelling like I just finished bathing in coffee. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription that allows you to shop over 600 different brands for just $17, with the flexibility to skip a month without penalties if you need to. Through their simple quiz, you'll be matched with fragrances from indie labels to top designer brands. So instead of having to spend large amounts of money on full-size bottles that you may not even like, Scentbird allows you to explore different fragrances with a 30-day supply before committing to that full bottle. The two favorite scents that I tried this month were Paper, which has notes of cedar, along with Magnetic Wood, which is a rich combination of bergamot, green mandarin, and sandalwood. Their bottles are also the perfect size to pack either in your day-to-day -day or in travel. So if you're interested in getting started with Scentbird, click the link below and use code MORGANCOFFEE for 55% off your first month, meaning it's only $8. Again, that's the link in the description and code MORGANCOFFEE. Thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Now, I will note that Breville is in no way sponsoring this video. I've spent my own monies and dollars on this thing we have before me. And that's kind of my, my first point about this. This is a very expensive knockbox. This was about $80 in total. And if you need any uh, comparison to that, this little buddy over here was 20. And even that is on the, the higher end of home knockboxes. Frankly, you can just use your trash can. If example, you have a trash can down here and you just wanna use the edge of it to knock out your puck, great. So $80, already my eyebrows are up I don't know if you can see it behind my glasses eyebrows go up but for $80 I'm I am willing to consider that doable if I am to be wowed here I would like to be tickled and wowed by this thing when it arrives comes in this nice little box right here it says puck sucker across the front which is a name I will not be getting over anytime soon I would just be such a huge fan if Breville went all out with the very like clear name giving and it's like no longer the the Oracle or like barista Express it's just like shot polar <laughs> Like, I think that would be quite fun if they made their entire product line that way. But the puck sucker itself is a, is a pretty simple build. You have really two parts to this. You have your receptacle. This is a hard plastic and you can actually dishwash this. So pretty easy to clean. And then you have the more mechanized part of it. This seals onto the top. And then when you put your portafilter in this spot right here where it fits very nicely, it will create kind of a vacuum sucking motion that will, instead of you needing to knock the puck out, it will just 
pull the puck out itself, creating, in theory, a noiseless and like motionless cleaning operation. You may notice this is shaped for a portafilter. You can see it has like the spot where the handles go. It also has the two spots where the forks of the portafilter go. And that is something that we need to talk about next because this puck sucker is only compatible with Breville 58 millimeter portafilter. So let's say you have a different portafilter. I happen to have a different portafilter. I have this portafilter. This is a portafilter from Ranchilio. It is also a 58 millimeter portafilter. And if you look at them side by side, they do look rather similar. However, there are slight differences. So if I try to press the portafilter in here, it doesn't seal. There is no seal happening here. The, the other fork won't kind of latch into where it's supposed to. First and foremost, to buy this product, you need to already be in the Breville ecosystem. You also need to be using a 58 millimeter portafilter. This seemed to be one of the, the chief complaints that really brought this item's rating down online and various forums. A lot of people didn't seem to realize that this was a Breville exclusive product. And so they of course bought this $80 knockbox, took it home and found that it didn't work with any of their other machines. And like, that sucks. That is like a, a, a really uh, a big downside in my opinion. But at the same time to create the sort of fit and seal and because not all portafilters are standardized, kind of have to, like it has to be to only your proprietary portafilter. Anyways, I happen to have a Breville portafilter here so we can actually test this. I have pulled a shot with it. So we have a nice compacted puck right here. And I think we're just gonna, just gonna put it out. We're gonna put the portafilter in. We're gonna see what happens. So if you can hear, there's this little like trigger button right here. So when you press down with the portafilter, it activates. You can hear the, the vacuum start, if you will, but of course there's nothing in here, so nothing's happening. I will also note, just for anyone curious, this does come with the nine volt battery that is required to start it. So it's not rechargeable, it is battery operated. It's a nine volt, it comes with it, which is nice. It doesn't take down the price tag too much from $80 though. It took two tries to get the puck out, but it wasn't loud. Didn't really require much force. In the end, we have a puck inside, no longer her portafilter. And I might add, this is a pretty clean removal of a puck from a portafilter. I think we need to do this a few more times to really, to really dial in the amount of force needed to kind of push out the puck. Because upon just placing the portafilter on top, very, very gently, as I did before, it didn't fully remove itself, but with just like a little, just like a little bit of force, not, not a full like knockbox amount of force, but just with like a, a tap, it came out pretty easily. The necessity of that amount of force could be user error on my side. That is always a possibility, but I want to try it again to see if we're able to get it to, to remove without any force at all. I'm gonna get some espresso. I'll be right back. We have one puck that has already been sucked into the puck sucker. We have another one that is ready to go. And again, as you saw before, it took kind of two tries to get that puck to release. And I had to apply just like a little bit of force on the second go around. Now for anyone's curiosity about the shots I'm pulling right now, I'm going with about 18 grams in the basket. So 18 grams of espresso in all of these pucks. My shots are pulling in about 25 seconds with an output of about 36 grams. Mills, mills, mills of liquid. <laughs> but also translates directly to grams. Now, these are fairly standard shot parameters, so I'm not like overpacking the basket. Like everything is, is pretty normal here. We're gonna go with a, a gentle press here. Just a turn around and... Oh, there it went. <laughs> <laughs> all on its own. One thing about that second puck, a little bit of a messy release. Now, it's not really a problem. Get yourself a towel, clean it out, and you're good to go. It does appear, though, that the entire sucking of the puck has to occur for a couple seconds. I believe that was about five, six, maybe seven seconds at the top half. So this is in no way a quick release. We have two pucks in here now, and you may start to notice how our, our bottom carafe is beginning to fill up. The bottom layer is mostly covered. This has a capacity of about 10 to 12 pucks. So depending on your size and kind of how they fall into the bottom chamber, you'll be able to use this about 10 or 12 times before you need to pop this top part off and then dump the pucks into the trash can or compost or whatever you do with your pucks. I just feel like it should release quicker than that. So I'm gonna go pull one more shot and we're gonna do some comparisons and some thoughts about this. I feel like I have been fairly neutral so far, mysteriously neutral even. I'll be right back. So now, as you can see the side, I'm just gonna... puck down, pretty clean release. Now I've had this puck sucker 
for a little bit now. I've had some chances to use it just kind of like on my espresso bar and all the results I've had there have lined up with what has happened in this video as well. It takes either a little bit of force to get it to release instantly or you have to give it a couple seconds of just kind of sitting there for that puck to finally drop. I have had maybe one instance in all the shots I have pulled with it that the puck has kind of dropped instantly upon being very, very lightly pressed against the puck sucker. This entire video is a tongue twister. However, there is a primary reason I'm not like critiquing this thing as hard as maybe some of you want me to or expect me to. And that comes particularly from the principle that sometimes when you see products that seem a little bit ridiculous or seem like they don't make sense, sometimes you aren't the target audience for them. And that is completely okay. Is this thing more expensive than I think it should be? Yes, <laughs> $80 I think is a lot to ask of someone to buy something that is made out of entirely hard plastic and that removes pucks from your portafilter. It is most certainly a luxury slash premium item. However, I think it does have a use case that makes it work pretty well. Let's say you are someone who doesn't have a lot of wrist mobility. Let's say you're someone who might have weaker wrists or hands and aren't capable of creating kind of this like, this hard, knocking motion that's usually required out of a knock box. In that case, having a tool like this that allows you to very, very gently release the puck using your portafilter without any force that creates any jarring motion in your arm, I think having a product like this would work really well for you. Now, it does take longer. This is not gonna be for your average home espresso user, but I think there are certainly people out there that could benefit from this. So is this a product for me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Am I tickled that I have it now? Yes, absolutely. Is this a product for a lot of people? Probably not, but also maybe. But is this a product that could work really, really well for particular people? I think yes. With this huge advent of kind of like home espresso, especially since the pandemic, there has been just renewed interest in, in brewing espresso, in puck prep, in the science behind espresso and how you can create cafe, grade, I'm going to call it espresso, at home with a whole bunch of tools. And of course, with that interest comes the, the myriad of products and businesses that would like to create things for you to buy as an interested individual. It's very easy and very common for people to want to kind of over-engineer things, to create solutions for problems that don't necessarily exist. And you could definitely look at something like this and think that's the case. And for some people, it is the case. But additionally, there is a kind of level of accessibility to something like this that I don't think should be discredited. So so I guess that's my review <laughs> of the puck sucker. It is ridiculous. It has an incredible name. It works okay. It is a little bit too expensive, but I think it could have a use. I don't know, that didn't sound very positive. I, I do mean this to be kind of a neutral review because I think you need to take away whether this is a good thing for you or not. I think with a lot of products, it's hard for me to say a black and white, like this is good or this is bad because it might be good or bad for me, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily good or bad for you. I just wanna provide you with information that you can take away your own results with. Anyways, this has been my review of the puck sucker and I will continue to say puck sucker and sucking pucks as many times as I can. Now, if you have any more questions or if you you yourself have a puck sucker that you have experiences with, please leave those down in the comments down below. I would love to hear more experiences because as far as I can see, it's a lot of just kind of like Breville home enthusiasts who have talked about this product or reviewed it online. And so I'm kind of curious to see a, a wider breadth of experiences. Anyway, you will not find me using this very often. I maintain my very cathartic and uh, wonderful experience of knocking out the pucks in a more traditional knock box, but who knows, maybe this could be fun for you. All right, everyone, <laughs> I have to go reset my espresso bar. I have to go put this somewhere or give it to someone. <laughs> and in the meantime, I hope you have had some fun with this video. I hope you have learned a little bit more about this strange new product that exists. As usual, I am Morgan Drinks Coffee, and you can find me here on YouTube once a week, plus plenty of YouTube shorts. I really like doing those. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok or Instagram almost every single day. Additionally, one more thing, if you want to check out any of my frequently used wares or coffee tools, uh, feel free to go to morgandrinkscoffee.com where I list out and have a whole bunch of them that you can shop from. I'm going to leave. I unfortunately don't have a beverage to take with me, but I will take the puck sucker with me. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. See you next time. Bye everyone.